Good people, welcome to Fiddlehead Fiddle Lessons. I'm not going to share with you eight bowing tips to help you sound amazing. All right. Number one, throw away a bow. Basically, we'll start down bow and you just draw the bow quickly, let it go, and enjoy the sound of the ring. Up bow too. All right. The next thing you can do is try to do it, make just a regular bow sound as good as that without throwing it away. Throw away bow will help you build a nice big full tone. It also sort of releases tension. It's kind of sh it's like shaking it off. All right. You can also, do, as with all these bowing tips I'm going to give you, you can start with open strings, but then you can do fingered notes like D1. Try it up bow. And then so on. You can do D2. But you might want to stay with one finger a long time. All right. Finally, with all these bowing tips, you can kind of try them out on tunes in different places. So like Arkansas Traveler, we can, we can use throwaway bow to build up a part. So say you're having trouble on Arkansas Traveler. And you can't get it to sound good. What you do is uh, you should play throwaway bow on the first note, then on the second note, then on the first two together. I did it wrong, but. So it should be first note, then second note, then we can do it. Right? And then the third note. And in that way, if you slowly add a note, but ending on throwaway, it'll pr probably make the t tune sound a lot better. And if you get stuck on one particular note, say when you get to G2, it always sounds bad, then just do a single note on G2. Just do single throwaway bow. So that's throwaway bow, number one, and to me, probably the best tip because of how powerful it is in improving your tone. The next, let's do number two, saw bow. So saw bow is just like the name says, it's kind of like you're sawing a log. Short bows in the middle, with a little bit of an accent on the downbeat. fingered notes and on parts of, of tunes. That's sabo. Let's move on. Number three, stop and rock. This is a technique for practicing string changing. So basically, say we want to practice going from D to A. Sometimes when people or beginners are doing that, they'll have a little bit of carryover from the D going to the A. That kind of thing can be solved by doing this exercise stop and rock. The basic idea is we go down on D, quick start, quick stop, and slowly rock it to A. Quick stop and slowly rock back to D. Most students don't want to do this, the rock part slowly. But that's really the key to the exercise because you're training your hand to feel the angle shift. And then the a related to stop and rock or like kind of like the next part of it is to not stop it, to kind of just let it flow, just play with it. And then going back to stop and rock. doing that some more and then back to more like flow. I think it's important to sort of let go of the stopping part because then you kind of just you kind of just play and you kind of see how it can be integrated into what you're doing. All right, so that's number 3. Number 4 is string crossing exercises. So related to stop and rock, but now with fingering. So
So a lot of these um, Boeing tips, I have individual videos for because you could explore each one of them in great detail. But I'm, in this video, I'm sort of giving you a, a, like the primer on all these Boeing tips. So I'm not going to go into too much detail, but string crossing and fingering. That's the basic exercise. We go down on D, up on A, down on D1, up on A. So basically you're practicing the, the coordination of not only string crossing, but fingering. And then you could add other fingers, like two and three. All right, you could add patterns. And you could add a, the rhythm of paradiddle, if you know it. Paradiddle is. All right, I'm gonna write some of these things down in the comments field. Um, and then you can do paradiddle with D1 placed. With D2 and so forth. So that's string crossing and fingering. The fifth Boeing tip is, are we on number five? Yes we are. Is playing in the different thirds of the bow. So we have the lower third, the middle third, and the upper third. And you can do everything you've already done in these thirds. So for instance, in the lower third, you could do throw away. You could do saw. You could do stop and rock. You could play a scale. You could play a tune. Now, um, and you could do that, all that in the middle. And then the tip, or the upper third. Most fiddlers stick to the middle third. It's sort of the sweet spot. And as a beginner, I encourage you to start there. But if you want to improve your bow sound, try bowing just in the lower third and, and doing everything you've already been doing in the various thirds. All right, the sixth bowing tip is long bows. Start with just an open D. This can be hard, but playing in the thirds, which I, was the previous bowing tip, can help you with this because you get the feeling for how everything is in each part of the bow. But once you get into it, long bows can be really enjoyable just to enjoy like this nice sound you can make. And a nice challenge is to, when you do the change directions, to try to make that as seamless as possible. It's hard to avoid like, hearing that at all, but try to make it smooth if you can. Then with long bows, you can do everything with fingerings. So just finger D1 for a long time and, and it'll improve your tone with long bows. Finally, you can try to play parts of tunes with long bows. And so on. Okay, so that's long bows. Number seven is just a fun little thing to do called shimmer bow. That's what I call it. It sort of sounds like rain falling. It's just as fast as you can play, light little bows, just flicking the wrist and playing near the tip of the bow. You play it with scales. I think it might be called tremolo in, in if you're reading music. tunes. All right, the final, uh, the eighth and final Boeing tip is um, soft, loud, soft, or in, in other words, playing with volume. And the official music term is dynamics. And uh, so we can start in the middle of the bow and start with 
quiet little eighth notes, short bows, and then lengthen the bow to make it louder. And at a certain point, you get quieter. See how quiet you can get. Now you can vary this exercise by using a pattern like Hodeon. Or you could um, play with the fingered note. Let's try D3. And see how quiet you get. So this playing with these sort of big ranges of volume will help you find your center, find your tone. And you can you can even take this principle of dynamics and extend it to uh, like you could play like a tune softly, like play Ar I'm sticking with Arkansas Traveler one tune because I think it's kind of a useful way to approach it. But you play it soft, very little bow. And then you could have a pass where you just sort of jump to loud. Anyway, um, eight bowing tips for you to take home, practice with. If you even do just one of them a lot, I'm sure your bowing will get a lot better. Hope that was useful. See you next time on the Fiddlehead Fiddle Channel. Thanks for watching the video. Excellent.